Hi, Angel here. I want to walk you through my Perlite Crete. It's like Pummy Crete, only with Perlite, which is a little lighter, a little more expensive, um, but a little easier to work with. And just happens to be what was available. I was going to go with Pummy Crete, but uh, I am insulating a outdoor oven stove. It's my first one, and it's not perfect, but I'm happy with it nonetheless. I just put a layer of a, uh, well, I bound it all together with refractory cement. I got fire brick in there. I had to do some interior work and try to smooth it out because I didn't do a perfect job and it's still not perfect but I think it's gonna we will see. I think it's gonna work. I'm a little worried about my flu that I got sitting on that block there to hold it up because it's pretty heavy and I'm about to sink it in some more and uh see. Actually that reminds me maybe I can put a little wire reinforcement on it. Anyway um I've got a ceramic blanket and a little chicken wire. I didn't really cinch that down. Back to my perlite crete. I'm going five buckets of perlite to one bucket of Portland cement and uh, powder that is, and one bucket of sand. Ideally silica sand, but I don't have silica sand. I have bil builder's sand, and that's actually fine for this insulative layer. If it was the refractory layer, I'd be more worried, but I still use builder sand on some of it, because that's what I have. Uh, in any case, I went ahead and wet. Uh, there's a lot of different recipes out there, a lot of different methods. I've worked some with perlite and pumice, and so we'll see how this goes. But what I decided to do was I put two buckets of water into 10 buckets, because I doubled my recipe. So 10 buckets of perlite, two buckets of water. I swished that around real good with my shovel so that the perlite was nice and damp. And then I added my two buckets of sand and that's what you see now. And I mixed it up real good so it's even. And now I'm going to put my two buckets of Portland cement in there, mix it up, and then add a little water if I need to. We'll see how it goes. And then I'm going to pile it on about three or four inches thick, or at three to five inches thick, try to shape that and insulate it real well. And then uh, put a color coat on and be done. Uh, if you have any, <laughs> I'm a little out of it. I've been up since early this morning. And... This has been a really, really fun project. I will be posting other videos about it as well. But I uh, just thought you might want to see the perlite part. And in fact, let me just pause you. In case I lose you, though, you can find ways to connect with me in the description. And do leave me a comment if you have any questions. I'm going to pause you. We'll see if I can get this mixed and bring you back. All right, I thought I'd just show you real quick what it looks like uh, with a couple buckets of Portland mixed in. It's still nice and light and fluffy. I'm trying to show you that. Get it mixed up real good, and then I'm going to add just enough water to make it sticky. If it's not sticky enough, maybe I'll add a little more Portland, maybe even a touch of lime, which is nice and sticky. I'm going to pause you again. We'll see how long this lasts. All right, success. I actually added a whole, uh, almost a whole another bucket of Portland cement and a whole bucket of lime because it just wasn't sticky enough. So it's going to make the insulative factor just slightly less, but still, uh, well, have it hold together and make it easier to work with. I started piling it on here and you can see it's not super sticky still, but uh, that'll work. So I'm going to pile it on pretty thick, three to five inches all around, shape it. And then we'll be ready for finish coat. If you have any questions at all, feel free to put them in the comment section or shoot me an email. If you want to support me, shop in my store, hire me, anything like that, all those links are in the description. Until next time, I wish you peace, productivity, wild hair days, and playfulness. <laughs>